Bucket List Homestead. My name is Lynn, and today is going to be the first day of Meals of the Week for this week. Um, I enjoy doing these because it helps keep me accountable to follow my meal plan and actually do <laughs> some cooking. Um, I've kind of fallen off the meal plan wagon a little bit the last little bit. I think it's because I cooked every single day for the most part, all of January and all of February. So we're now halfway through March. I needed a little bit of a break. We're back to it again. And it's spring forward today, and I do not like it. Even Lily, <laughs> the dachshund puppy, is finding it difficult. It's gonna be an easy supper tonight. Um, we're actually gonna have uh, ravioli stuffed with um, beef um, and just some simple spaghetti sauce. It's literally heat, heat, serve. <laughs> um, I need something easy because it is spring forward, and this one really affects me. I'm not a fan of this. Um, I'm also still in the mindset of trying to use up some things. Um, when Grace and I organized the pantry last week, we made a list of things we need to use up. I also got to my freezer in the house. I still haven't done the freezers outside in the garage, but the ravioli have been in the freezer for a while, so they need to be done. So, and like I said, I wanted a simple, hearty meal for today. I'm um, also, I have a ton of these um, blueberries that I canned last year. Not a fan. I won't be canning whole blueberries again, but I'm going to try them in a uh, blueberry crisp tonight for after supper to um, see how they hold up. So I'm going to show you how I make that. So I'm just going to open my blueberries. Ooh. I'm using three pints and I have, I hope this is gonna be enough, a quarter cup of flour and about a third cup of water um, that I mixed into a slurry just because there's a lot of juice here. But I wanna use the juice. <laughs> we just need it to get a little bit thicker. It will thicken up too when it cooks, but I think I'm gonna add a little more. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more, probably another quarter cup, uh, not quite another quarter cup of flour, and three four. I'm gonna add some. So I'm really excited for this week's meal plan because I have a, quite a few um, new recipes we're trying this week because we're kind of just bored with everything. And um, yeah, that's better. Okay, so we're gonna pour this into a greased casserole dish. And I'm going to be making double of a lot of the recipes so I can freeze them and have some freezer meals ready. Boy, that is still really runny. Hmm. Gosh, I don't want to add even more flour, but maybe I need to. Okay, so the time change is really messing with me today. I meant to use some of that blueberry juice add the flour to the blueberry juice that was in those jars and add it to this. I, all I did was add more liquid with the water. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not thinking straight. I'm so tired. Um, so I added another quarter cup of just pure flour to this, stirring it up. And I know when it cooks, hopefully it will thicken. <laughs> um, you can also, I could have cooked this down, but I'm trying not to have too many dishes. I already got some in the sink as it is. So... I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in the oven, 350 degrees for a good 20 minutes and let some of that uh, liquid cook down and evaporate and the blueberries are just like disintegrating. I will not can blueberries again. That did not work out so great. Not so great at all. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in the oven for 350, let it cook down for 20 minutes and then what I have, I've made this before, it's a cup of oats a cup of all-purpose flour, not quite a cup of brown sugar because my family found it um, a little too sweet. I also, I forgot, I gotta add, I have monk fruit sugar here that I'm just gonna add to the blueberries because the blueberries have no sweeten, sweetener in them. Um, this is also something else I need to use up. Okay, 350 for 20 minutes and we'll see if this helps it. <laughs> Nothing like doing this and like for on camera and not not working, huh? I'm just gonna make the topping. I forgot here. I have about a half a cup of unsalted melted butter. 
So the topping will be all ready when that comes out. Hopefully that comes out right. <laughs> so while that's in the oven, I'll just let you know this week what I'm planning. That cilantro lime chicken we're planning for tomorrow night, plus the freezer meal from it. Uh, a pesto tortellini bake, because I have a lot of pesto still in my freezer. Um, a beef and broccoli stir fry. Uh, Aiden's on March break this week, so I told him he asked if I could make some cinnamon rolls. So I'm going to make some cinnamon rolls, probably start those tonight and let them rise all night so I can pop them in the oven in the morning. Oh, what else? I'm trying to think. There's a few other. Oh, St. Patrick's Day is this week, so I'm planning a St. Patrick's Day menu. Um, do, uh, supper and possibly a dessert that's supposedly St. Pat uh, Irish. Um, these are the cookbooks I'll be using. The Irish pub cookbook and the Irish granny's pocket bread and baking book. And there was a lot of um, desserts in that. So it's going to be a busy week. Um, I have everything written down that I uh, want to make. So hopefully the list will help. And I did get some new, oh, I put them away. I got some new things from Epicure that I want to try. Um, the beef and broccoli stir fry. There's a couple others. I can't remember what I got. So, yep. So those are just a few of the things that we will be making this week. Fingers crossed. Um, so I'm glad it's a fairly easy night because it's going to be a busy week of being in the kitchen where I love to be, quite frankly. Just not 365 days. <laughs> 25 minutes later and it thickened up. I also added um, about a cup of frozen blueberries that I had in the freezer in the house. Um, left over from pancakes the other day. Um, just because the, the canned blueberries are disintegrating. I also added the rest of the monk fruit sugar, which is probably another half a cup, and then not quite a quarter cup of organic cane sugar. It is tart, <laughs> and I even had David test it to see, and it was tart. So now it's tasting pretty good. I'm going to put my topping on, if I can find it. There it is. And we're going to put it back in uh, for at least another 20 minutes, maybe 30. Let's see how it goes. Sorry if you're here in the wash machine, it is right, right there. <laughs> Sundays are busy here. Everyone's doing laundry, it seems. Okay, so we're just gonna put this back in, like I said, another 20, 25 minutes at 375. And hopefully this is a nice little treat tonight. <laughs> it gets three more jars off my shelves. I suppose if I wanna use it just for juice, they probably worked. Okay, our blueberry cribbler, that's what we actually call it because it's a cross between a crisp and a cribbler, which I've explained before. This is what we're having tonight, braised beef au jus ravioli. They sound good. We've never had them. Um, so, and I've already got the sauce heating up. We got a nice big Caesar salad and that's going to be supper tonight. Hit the subscribe button, hit the button! And so you don't miss any of my mom's new videos, ring-a-ding, hit that bell! Back in the kitchen, <laughs> and tonight's supper is going to be the cilantro lime chicken. This is what I've been really looking forward to. It smells amazing, it sounds, smells, it sounds amazing. And it's going to go in the crock pot. Um, everything goes into the pot, like boom, 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 boom. So that makes it easy. And then the extra, I'm making a double batch so I can, um, I'm still gonna cook it all. And I'm just gonna freeze the leftovers as a freezer meal. You can also do this in the Instapot. I have quite a few hours to supper, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it in the crock pot or the slow cooker, depending on where you're from. I am starting this a little bit later than I meant to. Again, this time change is just wrecking havoc, but it's still early, it's only 11 o'clock. So it still has plenty of time until supper. So this is what you're going to need for this recipe. We'll need 
obviously, uh, I'm doing, like, I'm doubling the recipe, so I'm going to have two bones of boneless, skinless chicken breast. You need a cup of orange juice, a cup of chicken broth, juice of four fresh limes. So, sorry, if you need a cup of orange juice, you're going to need two cups, so I'm hoping this is going to give me two cups. Um, the juice of four fresh limes, four teaspoons, roughly, I always use more garlic than a recipe calls for, of minced garlic, and that is frozen. That's from what I preserved last year, from what I grew. Uh, cilantro, this is dehydrated cilantro. So we're going to need, they're saying for a half a cup, um, I'll probably put a cup roughly in, some cumin, and some black beans, plus the chicken, and that's all we need. So we're gonna put all this, so all that is in there now. We're gonna set it on low, and we're good till supper. Now I have to figure out what we're gonna have with it tonight. I haven't 100% decided. Um, I think I might do up some rice, because I wanna do up a bunch of rice for meal preps for lunch this week. So we'll probably definitely have some rice with it. And there's already corn in there, maybe some carrots or something. So now I have to get started on the cinnamon rolls for Aiden. Okay, got the cinnamon rolls made and rising. And I've decided instead of making both batches, because we don't need both batches, regardless of what Aiden says, I am going to let these rise. Freeze them right like that, and then once they're frozen solid, I'll take them out of the pan. I still greased it, too. I'll take them out of the pan and put them in Ziploc bags, and then we'll have, um, you know, some cinnamon rolls that I don't have to try and rush to make <laughs> on one of these weekends coming up. And then, yeah, we'll have a batch. So, whoo, and it's only noon on a Monday after spring forward, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> pot is done. I've decided to turn this into a burrito bowl. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So I made some rice in the um, Instapot. That's done. Instead of using water, I took some of the liquid from this and cooked the rice in it because there's a lot of liquid in here. Way, way too much liquid. And I didn't even have as much <laughs> as the recipe called for, um, for, especially for orange juice. So yeah, I'm uh, not sure what's going on there, but I am going to use a slotted spoon just to scoop it all out because that's a lot of liquid. So we have rice. So we have our bowls here. I have some lettuce from yesterday that we didn't use all of. And I have the rice. I have some avocado crema that I am trying to defaw in some warm water. I took it out too late. This is just guacamole and sour cream that I blended together to make it really smooth. It's and I made a bunch of it and uh, froze it. It's so good. It is so good. Um, so, yeah, we are ready to eat. And then we need to go and run some errands. So we're eating a little early tonight. I also took the chicken out a little while ago, um, cut it all up, and put it back in there. So that's why they're bite-sized pieces. It's horrible. I know if David will like it or not. So let's just try a little bit. It's not terrible, but there's not a lot of flavor. Let's see what he thinks. What do you think, hon? Mean. Good. Yeah? No. I mean, it's not awful, but it's not awful, but I think I would have add maybe 
maybe even some taco seasoning, not just the cumin. Um, definitely need some salt. Um, I'd give this a C. I'm not going to make this again. All right, we'll see you tomorrow for Wednesday's meal, which at the moment I can't, or Tuesday. See, I don't even know what day of the week it is. I can't even remember at the moment what it is tomorrow. I think it might be stir fry. Getting ready for supper again. <laughs> We've got a few hours to supper, but I wanna get these made so they can sit, because um, I'm making honey garlic meatballs and I'm using Epicure, so it makes it even easier. And so I have, the recipe calls for one pound. I wanna freeze some of these, so that's actually almost three pounds. And you're supposed to mix two tablespoons. I'm gonna do two. And then you save the rest to make into a glaze. But easy peasy supper tonight. Just show you. Mix it up. I'm eventually gonna use my hands. I have very clean hands. I just washed them, took my rings off. Terrible about remembering that. And it's time for the best tool you got, your hands. So I had originally on the menu beef and broccoli, but the hamburgers have been out for a couple of days and I really wanted to get to that and get them frozen. So meatballs are one of David's favorite things. So to eat. Mix them up. And we're gonna make um, mini meatballs and I'll probably serve this uh, I know you can serve it with rice, but I think I'm going to do spaghetti noodles tonight for something different. Okay, we're all mixed in. So last night's supper was, I, I'm not going to share last night's supper recipe with you just because the link to the recipe, I don't think it was all that good. So, um, we did freeze the leftovers. Um, when I bring it out, I'm going to add a lot more seasoning to it and if that makes it better then I will save it so I'm just gonna make these all up um, try to think I might make some pudding too um, David's been liking having that little treat in the evening so That's two meals and then I have some for tonight and I've decided I'm gonna add some uh, bell peppers I think uh, to everything when I serve it so I gotta go get some bell peppers out of the freezer but I'm looking forward to supper tonight so I've started supper I got the meatballs in the oven I've got the peppers cooking up I'm gonna turn them down this is the honey garlic seasoning it was just the rest of the packet from Epicure uh, three-fourths water and a tablespoon of honey roughly I didn't measure and I got water boiling for spaghetti so and this is thickening up nice yeah, I'm just gonna turn that down a bit and the meatballs are cooking away in the oven
Wednesday. Got the day right. Um, in beef and broccoli stir fry, I'm using another little um, step just to save me a little bit of time. Uh, Epicure beef and broccoli stir fry. This one's new to us, but my cousin Michelle says it's amazing. So before I cut up my steaks, which I have right here, my gorgeous steaks, I have here um, three fourths cup of water, two tablespoons of soy sauce, and then we're gonna add, I opened that horrible, we're gonna add that into there and it's just mix it all up and set it aside while I get the steak going. I also have over, doo -doo -doo, bring you along here, over here on the stove, my wok, which I'm just gonna get it heating up here. Somebody move my oil, just a minute. So we're gonna heat up a couple tablespoons of oil. I don't have it too high because I gotta cut the steaks up, so. I didn't have any um, beef strips already cut up. So I just took a couple of steaks out of the freezer yesterday. So I'm gonna do small. So I already took some fat off. The chickens are gonna get that. slash freezer meal slash St. Patrick's Day meal <laughs> video because um, we're just having pizza tomorrow night and you've seen me make that a million times so um, it's been fun this week uh, having all these meals and today I'm really looking forward to it so the first thing I'm making actually is the dessert for uh, our St. Patrick's Day dinner tonight and it's from this book and I will link that down in the description and apples um, according to this there's a little bit of history here that apples have been grown in Ireland for many centuries Legend has it that St. Patrick himself planted an apple tree in an ancient settlement outside of Armagh, Arm, Armagh, Armagh City. And they actually have a huge uh, festival now there every year. So apples are pretty popular in Ireland. <laughs> They're pretty popular here too. So I've already pre-measured everything so I don't have to bore you with all of that. So in my kitchen here, I have half a cup of unsalted butter, room temperature and half a cup of powdered sugar and we're just going to get that uh, mixing up until it's light and fluffy and in here we have i have to double check here it is one and a third cups of all-purpose flour two teaspoons of baking powder a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of salt and that's all been sifted um, that's in here two eggs my apples, I have them sitting, um, they're sliced very thin and sitting in cold water with some lemon juice added. And it's roughly about two apples, one giant apple and one smallish to medium sized apple. And I have the streusel topping all ready to go. In here is um, one cup of flour, a half a cup of powdered sugar, and six tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I just crumbled it all with my fingers till I got to the texture I wanted. And you're going to need a greased nine inch spring form pan and i use my lard to grease that so that's doing its thing oh and we need one or two tablespoons of milk too so we're just going to continue to let that get light and fluffy so the other thing on the menu today is i'm also going to make sourdough irish soda bread um, i'm waiting i had to feed my sourdough so that will be later today so i'm waiting for that to start bubbling up and everything. And tonight we're gonna to be making, let me get the official name. No, not corned beef. <laughs> um, it's actually pot roast pork. Pork is insanely popular in Ireland. Um, I guess they eat it even more than chicken. And uh, this is gonna be so good. It's gonna be uh, braised in apple cider. Um, yeah, which I have, thank goodness. 
Um, so here's a picture of it. Doesn't that look delicious? So it's going to actually make two uh, pork tenderloins. I'm going to freeze the other one. So that will be all later today. Beat in the egg. So I'm going to beat in one egg for now and save in the second egg. Well, I guess I'm not saving the second egg. I was going to try to save the second egg <laughs> for last, but it went in. I guess someone laughing at me over here in the corner. That's not funny. Um, yeah, so both of them are in there. <laughs> We're just going to add a little bit of the flour mixture at a time. The flour milk. About half of it and save the other half. That will be the last thing we add. Man, this is a thick batter. That's as smooth as I can get it because it's taking more batter off. So now I'm just going to place the apples. Try and find some of the bigger pieces. apples got a lot of apple left here so hopefully the kids will eat them as a snack um, then we're just gonna spoon the streusel on top degree oven it says for an hour again my oven cooks a lot quicker so I'm gonna put it in for 45 minutes and then check it I'm gonna clean up here and we're gonna do a little prep and we're gonna change the recipe a bit for this pork tenderloin I'm gonna do it in the crock pot so let me get this in the oven clean up and we'll start that in the crock pot I have my two pork tenderloins two-thirds cup of apple cider two-thirds cup of chicken broth a couple of sprigs of uh, thyme and I think that's it Yep. Oh, and an onion. An onion I chopped up. So we're just going to put this on low and slow. So the recipe actually does not call for it to be in a, a slow cooker. <laughs> um, there's going to be, whoops, there's going to be a cream sauce I'm going to make with it um, later. Uh, it's all supposed to be done in a pan, blah, 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 blah. I have a very busy day, so I need to have a lot of my supper already done because I still have to make the Irish soda bread. And Dave and I are heading out for a little bit of fun for a couple of hours. <laughs> so at least that part's done. Um, I'll, I, I might take it out and sear it for, uh, I don't know, we'll see. I think it's going to be fine. Um, I've cooked tenderloin many, many times in a slow cooker. Now I have a problem. So later, when that's all done, we'll let it rest. I will use all the um, juices that are in the crock pot to make the cream sauce. So... Okay, apple cake is in, pork tenderloin started, sourdough is looking, sourdough starter is looking amazing over there, getting all bubbly, so when we come back in a little bit, I'll get the bread going, and that only takes about an hour, so that will be perfect, I can get that baking and everything, and photobomb by David. <laughs> um, so we're going to head out, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to uh, have supper tonight and try that apple cake. Okay, we're back, uh, the pork is smelling amazing. The apple cake looks amazing. It smells amazing. So now I'm going to get my sourdough bread done, which is good. We have at least about an hour till I'm going to take off my rings. We have about an hour until supper time or so, and that's about what this is going to take, so it's perfect timing. So in this big bowl, let's just show you. In this big bowl, I have, I did it a while ago, so I have to look at the recipe. Um, 250 grams of all-purpose flour, 250 grams of whole wheat flour, 15 grams of salt, and 15 grams of baking soda. And we're just going to stir this up a little bit. And then we're just going to add the liquid to this. It's going to be very sticky. Then we're going to put it out here. Knead it just 8 or 10 times. It says actually it does better the less kneading you do. I have some parchment in my Dutch oven right here and you don't need a Dutch oven you can cook this on a baking sheet uh, in a round with uh, parchment but I like doing it in my Dutch oven I find you get a nice crust with it okay so that's nice and sticky and now the fun part dust a little bit and of course I will share the recipe with you 
down in the description box below. Okay, so now we want to kind of pinch it. All right, and we got a nice circle. And the oven is preheated to, this is very odd, 428 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a digital um, stove, so I'm able to do that. But if you can only do 425, then just do 425. Okay, so we have it in a nice circle. Let's see if you can see that. Okay, nice. Oh, it wants me to push it down a bit. Okay. And we need to slash the top with some kind of decoration. I'm not, I just pretty much do a slash. <laughs> Bread knife works great. So we're just going to do a... There. That's about as fancy as I get. One little line. <laughs> So we're going to bake it for 20 minutes at the 428 and then turn the oven down uh, to 392 and bake it for another 20 minutes. So. Okay, so the pork is all done. Whoops, I gotta put the lid back on the pork. And I've taken out a good probably two cups of the liquid that was in there. We're going to bring it to a boil. I have two thirds cup of table cream. The recipe calls for heavy cream. I don't have any. It's going to be fine. And in here, this is very strange. Um, two tablespoons of salted butter, and I haven't added any salt to anything, so that's good. And two table, six tablespoons roughly, of uh, butter and two tablespoons of flour. And it said to make like a paste, and that's what I did. So we're gonna, this is gonna boil. We're gonna whisk that in there, the cream in there, get it all going, and then we'll slice up the pork. Oh, I have to show you the bread. There's our Irish soda bread. It smells amazing. It's still a little bit warm and it says best served warm. So we'll be slicing that up and we'll get it all plated up. ready we're gonna try it and Aiden's even gonna try the pork without the sauce because Aiden actually does eat pork Gracie doesn't eat pork but that's okay Grace already had her St. Patrick's Day supper so we are gonna try it that's good pork mm -hmm. it's really good wow that is really good. very flavorful I love the sauce and I forgot to I was having scalloped potatoes because it's not St. Patrick's Day without potatoes. Okay, Aiden, what do you think? Oh, that's great. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Take care, God bless, and see you in the next video.